Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Honigberg. I'm a cardiologist at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Today, we'll be talking about a topic that's fundamental to the practice of primary care, the treatment of hypertension, with a focus on the 2017 American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association guidelines. In today's video, we will review evidence-based non-pharmacologic interventions to lower elevated blood pressure. Next, we will identify individuals for whom pharmacotherapy to lower blood pressure is indicated. Finally, you'll understand how to prescribe guideline-recommended antihypertensive medication therapies. The complications of chronically elevated high blood pressure include atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases, such as ischemic heart disease, stroke, and peripheral artery disease, aortic aneurysm and dissection, heart failure, and chronic kidney disease. On a global scale, elevated blood pressure is the most common risk factor for death and disability worldwide. The 2017 ACC AHA guidelines define four categories of blood pressure, normal blood pressure, elevated blood pressure, stage one hypertension, and stage two hypertension. Non-pharmacologic interventions are recommended for individuals with elevated blood pressure and both categories of hypertension. What are some of these non-pharmacological blood pressure lowering interventions? First, weight loss. The best goal, ideally, is to work toward ideal body weight, but this is infeasible for many patients. The guidelines recommend initially targeting one kilogram reduction in body weight for most adults who are overweight. You can expect roughly one millimeter per mercury reduction in blood pressure for every one kilogram reduction in body weight. Second, dietary modification. Several randomized trial-supported heart-healthy diets are available including the Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, or DASH, diet. In general, we recommend that patients consume a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low content of saturated fat. This can be even more effective for blood pressure when paired with sodium restriction. An ideal goal from a sodium intake standpoint is less than 1,500 milligrams per day. At the very least, patients should aim to decrease their daily intake by 1,000 milligrams from baseline. Next is potassium supplementation. Guidelines advise that patients aim for at least 3,500 milligrams per day of potassium intake, ideally through dietary sources rather than medications. Good sources of dietary potassium include fruits, vegetables, low-fat dairy products, fish and lean meats, nuts, and soy products. Note that potassium supplementation is not recommended for individuals with chronic kidney disease or those using medications that interfere with renal excretion of potassium. Increased physical activity. Aerobic exercise, resistance training, and isometric exercise, such as planks, all lead to reductions in blood pressure. Guidelines recommend targeting 150 minutes per week of moderate or greater intensity aerobic exercise, both for blood pressure and overall cardiometabolic health and wellness. And finally, Alcohol moderation. Guidelines recommend no more than two standard sized alcoholic beverages per day for men and one per day for women, although some evidence that either lower targets or thresholds might be beneficial for overall health. How do you decide whether the patient you're seeing requires pharmacotherapy in addition to non pharmacologic lifestyle modification? Start with the blood pressure categorization elevated blood pressure, stage one hypertension, or stage two hypertension. For patients with elevated blood pressure, the guidelines recommend starting with non-pharmacologic interventions, lifestyle modification, and reassessing in three to six months. Conversely, for patients with stage two hypertension, the guidelines recommend a combination of non-pharmacologic interventions and the initiation of blood pressure lowering medication. For stage one, it depends. Does the patient have established cardiovascular disease, diabetes, or an estimated 10-year risk of a cardiovascular event greater than or equal to 10%? If not, the guidelines advise that it's reasonable to trial non-pharmacologic modifications or interventions and reassess in three to six months. If the answer is yes, the guidelines recommend starting medication in addition to non-pharmacologic approaches. Based on randomized trials like the SPRINT trial, most patients deserve a typical blood pressure goal less than 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury. You've decided that your patient warrants pharmacotherapy, 
what medication should you start? Many different antihypertensive medications are available to clinicians. The guidelines endorse these four categories shown here as very reasonable first-line approaches to managing blood pressure. The thiazides, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, or ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs, or the calcium channel blockers. And the typical daily doses and dose frequencies of several commonly used agents are shown here. Comorbidities can help guide selection of particular agents to use. For example, beta blockers are also commonly used to treat blood pressure in patients with underlying cardiovascular conditions, such as coronary heart disease, heart failure, or arrhythmia. Refer to the 2017 ACC AHA hypertension guidelines for a more complete list of blood pressure lowering medications. Should you start with one drug or combination drug therapy? The guidelines advise consideration of two drug combination therapy up front for patients with stage two hypertension if the blood pressure is greater than 20 millimeters of mercury above the systolic goal or 10 millimeters of mercury above the diastolic goal. Be sure to select drugs from two different pharmacologic classes. Note that ACE inhibitors and ARBs should not be prescribed together. Combination therapy can be prescribed as a fixed dose combination pill or as two separate prescriptions. In summary, in this video, we reviewed evidence-based non-pharmacological interventions to lower blood pressure, reviewed how to identify individuals for whom pharmacotherapy to lower blood pressure is indicated according to guidelines, and learned how to prescribe guideline-recommended antihypertensive medications. Thank you for watching today. I hope you found this video educational.